to the Kent Lap Podcast. Understanding sonship has been a big one for me, um, and knowing that in being being a son, um, a son and daughter of God, um, being part of His family, and knowing that that adoption, you know. Uh, uh, vision is so important to me because just part of that has to do with the fact of how I grew up and a broken home, mm. not having a strong father in my life, had a stepdad who was, you know, kind of had we piecemealed father figures in my life. And it was men of God who who took on the role of responsibility of loving me and, and, and mentoring me. And, and sometimes that was, you know, piecemealed together as well. And so for me, really linking into the sonship my sonship in Christ, through Christ, um, the elder brother securing my my um, being part of being my adoption. Yes, just really speaks a lot to me. I'd say I probably spent a lot of time there because if you know from a, from my own areas where I've had to grow and 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 seek help and counseling and whatever else, it tends to be that's a that's an area that I I have to really hold on to quite. Firmly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sonship thing was—is it? Is it uh, isn't that real clear? And is it Galatians or Romans? Well, no, Galatians. Yeah. In uh, in chapter four, um, that man, this really landed on me a couple years ago. It says, "I mean that the heir, mm-hmm. as long as he's a child, is no different from a slave, though he's the owner of everything, but he's under guardians and managers until the date set by his father." Mm-hmm. And then it says, in the same way, we also, when we were children, were enslaved to the elementary principles of this world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son to redeem those who were under the law, mm. so that we, we might receive adoption as sons. Mm. What landed on me, though, is this analogy of an heir, because an heir is an heir. Like You, <laughs> you see this in movies and stuff all the time. Like These heirs are basically brats. You right. know, they're silly... Boys or whatever, but they're the heir. Right. They're the rightful heir. Right. And when the time has come, they rule. Right. Um, and it seems to me that speaking of as a kid or as a as a you know before we were even right with God, it was destined mm-hmm. that we would be right with God. We were we we're almost an I won't say we were an heir already, but this idea that it's the the firmness, the finality of it, the fact that we are an heir of God. Mm-hmm. I mean, this idea of a son of God, or put it in, in, I think in even better terms, like adoption. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. We are adopted sons of God. Yeah. And I, and I think that because, and I, and, and I, I find, I, I think that's probably a, a note that a, a lot of men are struggling with. You know, in terms of, because I think there's been just, they may have had good dads in their life or whatever else, but I think a lot of men struggle with that because they their value and worth has been somehow or another defined by the absence of, 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 of their dad in their life or, or something like that. And so there's this longing to know that there's, going, there's this good father in heaven who has provided for them, and not only provided for them, who is championing them. And, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, whatever else. And I think there's a sense in which we get that from Romans 8 as well mm-hmm. um, that gives us that kind of picture. And and for me, that's always been an area that, I man, like I, I, I hunger for that. And that's mm-hmm. where I, and I, and I... And maybe sometimes to a default, I I will I'll spend time, you know, staying there. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Do you think that's a... Do you think that's particularly prevalent today with grown men, even grown men in the Christian faith mm-hmm. that are... Um, maybe missing a dad figure or have some challenges there or some bad history there or some wounds there or whatever term um, that that makes understanding the sonship of God particularly important in this day and age? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I could, I mean, for as I see it, I mean, and again, you can look at a lot of contributing factors. You know, you got, you know, divorce, rampant divorce, both inside and outside of the church. You have... You know, you have a culture that tends to devalue masculinity, um, biblical masculinity, not necessarily, you know, Victorian masculinity, but masculine in terms of manhood and the value of it. They tend to kind of downplay that. And so I think that that all of that tends to um, really strike a blow at the psyche of a man at a certain point. And, 
And then when you have that and then, you know, growing up, you know, I, I love my mom most of my time. She did a wonderful job providing for me and my brother, but it was a strong mother, m- female figure. Um, my stepdad was more, not quite as strong. And he, a lot of times just kind of deferred to her on some things. And my dad was absent. He was the guy who just didn't want to have responsibility for anything, but he was still in my life. And so there's, so just using my own example, I think that a lot of men find some sense of that in their own life where they just don't know what it really means to be men. And I think sonship speaks to what manhood is. Mm. And and, I, and, I, and then listen, the sonship is also an all-inclusive term where it would include the daughters, right. of course. Yep. So there's that theology of sonship. Yep. And so women are included. So I would say there's probably something equally as important there. But I yep. do think since we're talking about sociologically, talking about men, I do believe that's a real, real big issue among the men that I've been in, in, in contact with and been pastoring for you know, the last 20 years or so. 